and welcome back to our next video. Today we're going to have kind of an unusual video. We're going to talk about what to do if you're in the backcountry and you're kind of in an emergency situation. So today we're continuing our series on being a prepper. Again, not with the crazy idea of being a doomsday prepper, the world's coming to an end, with the idea of the, of the weather's going crazy. It really is. And we are people who go into the backcountry. Many of you are, this is your first time camping in the backcountry. You don't know how to start a fire. You don't know how to do anything. And so I'm really going to suggest that uh, for your safety, that you learn some basics, uh, carry a few basics. Do not go out and start buying this stuff. Let me say that again. Don't go out and start buying this stuff. And remember in the very first video, we talked about how you pick up one thing a week to build a, a prepper's kitchen. Uh, so maybe you decide there's one thing out of this that makes the most sense and you go and get it. Uh, and then, and that's all you can afford that week, one thing. And then wait a week or two, wait ne till next month, maybe buy another thing. Don't go out and blow all your money. Money in the bank is more important than this stuff. So, so when we talk about a bug out bag, I'm thinking of a situation where maybe you're, you're out in the back country and you've got flooding, there's just a, a storm blows in, you don't have a radio, you don't know the storm's coming, you're not, you're not receiving weather signals from the National Weather Service, uh, and all of a sudden you're caught in a storm and your road is blocked, you can't get out, you're gonna be stuck here for who knows how long, this is for that moment. Is it likely to happen? No. Uh, are you likely to get a flat in your car? No. Should you not carry a spare because of that? No, you should carry your spare. You should have some of this on hand for that un unexpected time. So there's something in, in the world of survival, bushcraft, uh, the rule of threes. You can last three minutes without air, but that's not really pertinent to us. Although you might throw a mask in here you can go three hours in extreme temperatures, extreme cold, extreme heat. Uh, you can go three days without water. You can go a good three weeks or more without food. So those are your levels of priority. And as we go through these TNCs, you're gonna see that the very first ones are fire because that's your three hours of extreme temperatures. If you get wet, you're out hiking, it's raining, all of a sudden you're wet, It's 30, 40 degrees outside, 50 degrees, and you're sopping wet, your, your risk of death in three hours is very, very high. And so that's number one. And then water is next, and you'll see that water and cover, the, the, uh, the next C is cover. So if it's pouring rain, you got to get out of the rain. you got to get somewhere sheltered, get warm again. And then we're going to talk about water. That's another one of the essentials. So you can see as we go along here, it's those rule of threes that we're dealing with and keeping you alive. And again, if you're just broke down in the back country and you're running out of supplies and you can't get out, there's a, 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 a road is washed out and you can't get back into town. These are the things that if you have on hand, they will keep you going for the longest. So let's, so bear that in mind as we go through. I know for a lot of us, our biggest fear is breaking down. Uh, so you're driving through Nevada or, or Oregon. There's a lot of the West where you are, you break down, you may not see another human being for a while. And that's a big fear for a lot of us. And a lot of us are boondockers. So we're going kind of back into the backcountry, not really far, but where we're alone. And what happens if we break down? Uh, if you have to travel on foot for some reason or be away from the vehicle for some reason. Uh, so this is kind of building on the idea of being a, a prepper. So this is building a bug out bag. That's how I'm looking at this. We're gonna build a bug out bag in the world of bushcraft, survival, prepping. It's called the 10 C's and that'll make sense as we go on. And the guy who made this really well known and famous is a guy named Dave Canterbury. So I'd recommend you go look up Dave Canterbury. However, this can also apply to your more everyday life. If you just go for a day hike, there are certain essentials and they happen to be called the 10 essentials that you would carry on a day hike, which is all this stuff, just miniaturized. And I, every one of us should have the 10 C's with us all the time. And I think you should have, if, when you're in your vehicle, your car, your van, you might should have some or most of this stuff represented. Brian, now you're a big backpacker and mm -hmm. day packer. And so you have, uh, you carry the 10 essentials with you. 
I do, yeah. And, and as Bob mentioned, the 10 C's and 10 essentials, they are essentially the same thing, uh, not to use a pun there, but uh, it is it is really just having stuff on you that you can make a situation much better than you had been. Uh, and so whenever I go for a backpacking trip or a hiking trip, uh, I keep my 10, cents, 10 essentials in a very small, compact little bag. It's just a Ziploc. It has my personal information on it. Uh, you know, has a bunch of the, the, the 10 essentials or 10 C's in here. Uh, but as Bob said, just a much smaller version so that I can just grab this, throw it in my backpack and I'm gonna go. And as you know, I've been doing a series on prepping. So this fits into the idea of community prepping. So you're, you'll have this stuff and hopefully you're in a group and the group pools its resources. And by being each one being prepared, you have plenty for everyone. But sometimes you'll be alone and this will be something you have, should have as a minimum on your own. Okay, so the first thing that uh, uh, in the 10 C's is called a cutting tool. And a lot of these are really tied together. So these are kind of what K uh, Dave Canterbury recommends. You just have your normal knife. This should be on your hip. It's a, this is a Garber, uh, this is a Mora knife. Uh, bush, great knife, those are great bushcraft. knives. Mora knife is the best, best bang for your buck you can possibly get. Absolutely. And it, it comes with its own uh, sharpening steel built in, and let me put this away so I don't cut myself with it. And it comes with a fire steel. So you got two of your C's right here built in, and uh, that's a really great knife. Uh, and he also recommends a folding saw. This is made by Silky. It's a big one because uh, we're, we can carry bigger things. You can get these like six inches. You can process an astounding amount of wood for your fires with this thing. So this is your everyday knife. You're gonna treat it carefully. And then you, I, and he and most people recommend a, a, a knife you don't treat carefully. A knife that is built so hard and so tough that you can, uh, you can beat the crap out of this. You can split wood with this by doing what's called batoning. You put it at the end of the piece of wood and you take another stick and you drive it down. Um, this is to, to hack a, a small tree down, to break limbs off. This is a knife you beat the crap out of. It will not break under any conditions. This one is made by the K-Bar company. Uh, it's actually BK is the name of the company uh, that K-Bar owns or I'm not sure of the exact affiliation. I'm impressed with just how thick that thing is. That is like a miniature hatchet. It that is. is uh, it's almost like a machete, but in a smaller version. Much smaller, that's hefty. That's, that's ridiculous. This is a quarter inch, and this is probably an eighth of an inch. Yeah. And the idea, now this, you can break this. It's possible. Yeah. It's not easy, but you could. And, and one more uh, cutting you might want to have is a hatchet. A good, a good hatchet to carry with us. Uh, this is a Fiskars, and then also a multi-tool. You probably have a multi oh, that was your multi-tool. That's one of them, yeah. I also carry one in my waist. Right, so, so right, and there's gonna be ones you carry on your person at all times, a mm -hmm. knife, and a, one that you have in your pack or somewhere else. Yep. Your day pack, or in your, in your go bag, mm -hmm. uh, your bug out bag. That's also what we're essentially doing is a bug out bag. Now, a lot of what this is for is uh, processing firewood. That's for the majority of this, that, not all, of course, but. You, I, you know, you, we're going to talk about fire next, but fire is so essential to human life. And if you're in any kind of trouble, starting a fire is number one. And that's why you have all these fire wood processing um, uh, tools. So the next C is combustion. And there's lots of ways to do combustion. Like I said, I have a fire, uh, a ferrocium rod here. And that's always a guaranteed fire. You're going to get a lot of sparks. I'm going to do a video on all of this, on, on most all of this. So we're not going into any read details now. We're covering broadly. So you should always have, uh, no matter what, your kit should include a, a Bic lighter, no matter what. Yep. I, I ran across this really cool Bic lighter. It's got a long extension on extension. it. Extension, there you yeah. go. Okay. And I, I, you know, I, I've never been fond of the the Bic lighters that you have to just hold up right on your thumb. Oh, and you have to like, yeah, go off to the side. It's yeah, that's awkward. upside down. Yeah, yeah. Makes so some I, sense. I just came across these and I grabbed grabbed a couple of them for my, my bug out bag. So there you go. Uh, this is a um, this is a waterproof aluminum tin. And in this I would carry, I don't have any right now. I couldn't find them. I've got in the rig somewhere a bunch of waterproof uh, matches that are guaranteed. You These matches that are guaranteed, you can start it, you can dip it in water, take it out, wait two, three seconds, it'll burst back into flame. And I carry fire tinder. This is a good one. I've tried this. I'll, 
I'll do a test of different fire tinders. This is the UST wet fire tinder 12 pack. So what are you carrying for combustion? So combustion again, uh, I have it in this little packet and I have a basically a Bic lighter, but it's the tiny version, it's the mini. And again, I want something, I want everything in my little pack small. So I carry uh, a Bic lighter in here. I don't worry about matches, uh, but I also have a Bic lighter usually in my cooking mess kit as well. So there is redundancy there, but for a day hike, this will do. So the next uh, item we're going to talk about is cover. Uh, and there are lots of different ways to do this. I've just got a few on hand that I want to show you that are pretty highly recommended. A tarp of some kind. So this is a 10 by 10 sill nylon tarp. Uh, sill nylon is this super lightweight, thin, but very, very durable uh, material. 10 by 10 uh, with cordage, which is, will be our next one. With cordage and two trees, you can set up yourself a really good shelter. So, uh, but what you can do instead, and a lot of people will do for cover, is a, uh, a military poncho, because mm -hmm. military ponchos are designed to, uh, to, build, to make a shelter, keep you dry uh, where you wear it. It's, so it's a really great multi-purpose tool. Keep you dry and warm while you're wearing it. Build a shelter that you get under. But a, a, a sill nylon tarp, a lot of people prefer the seven by seven. I think seven is the minimum, and the 10 by 10 is not much more in money or size or weight. And so I think 10 by 10 is a really good one. And then a uh, space blanket. Now you'll see a lot of people will tell you to buy the, the little tiny thin ones that are just kind of card, a pack of card size. They're just gonna fall apart right away. That's the, what I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, they make a bivy one uh, that is pretty good size. It's the yeah. size of your fist. Mm -hmm. That will not fall apart and it will keep you alive. However, with a real one, well, mm -hmm. you got a picture here on the back. This is what you can do. You can just drape it around you. Actually, I do have one of those and I always keep it in my pack. Uh, I use it as a ground cloth, right? but it fits double purpose, right? So that I use it as ground cloth from under my tent, but I can also use it as the emergency blanket. It's red so that you have that signaling aspect of it. So in, you know, red means I need help most of the time. It sure does. Uh, and so that's that I actually have that exact one. So. And then uh, everyone knows you should have some uh, garbage bags with you. Uh, uh, Dave Canterbury re uh, requires when his class, when you take his survival class, he requires that you have four of them. He requires you to have the big 55 gallon heavy duty drums. All the things you can do with that are amazing. Uh, you can cut the holes in the head and you got a poncho. Mm -hmm. You can, uh, you got to carry water. We'll come up to that next. Uh, uh, you can, you can fill it full of water and carry it. It's a way you can transport water with you if you have to transport, if you have to move. Uh, you can go out and collect firewood and put your firewood in it and bring back a lot of firewood at once. If you have to cross a snow's pack, you can glissade, and I've done this a lot in my life, glissade yeah, down the I've side seen. of a hill. You can make a, you can make a sled out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, this three, four garbage bags, if you can spend the money for the really good ones, that's better. Now a container, well, so now this is a container, like I said, mm -hmm. you can put water in there and transport water, not the best idea. Uh, but this is a what uh, is highly recommended as a container. This is what Dave Canterbury recommends, and I, as soon as I heard this, the logic of it was just compelling, so I had to do the same thing. Um, this is what it means by container. This is a cooking pot. So if you if you water, you can only live three days without water. You got to have clean water, and you cannot be you you'll, you the water can kill you really quickly too. If it has Giardia in it, Giardia is a bug, generally we think of it as from beavers, but it comes from lots of things. There are lots of things in water that can cause you diarrhea. Diarrhea, when you're not getting enough water, causes you to drink more water, makes you sicker, and you're, you're in your a, a a cycle. Yeah. You're into a cycle leading to death. Yep. So you gotta get clean, purified water. So these are the tools that he recommends. So you fill this, this is a stainless steel, and then this has to come off because this will melt. So you have to take the plastic lid off, and then you can just put this right in the fire. You get this full of water, you put this right in your fire. Again, that's why you have to start a fire so you don't freeze to death, so you protect yourself from animals, so you have higher morale. Uh, you, this is an algae 40 ounce. You put this in the fire, you boil your water, you've got clean, clean water. You also can cook. Now you have boiled water to cook with. Mm -hmm. And then this fits right inside here, and you can just put this in the fire and then pour your water in here as your storage container, and then you can cook and eat out of this. 
So this is, and you can see it just goes down to no space. You gotta carry water. And so this is just a fantastic way to do it. And so what are you doing for a container? Uh, so oftentimes I'll just, will bring my platypus. Uh, again, you can't put this in the fire. So you're looking at other avenues besides fire for sterilizing your water. Um, I usually carry a small Sawyer water filter uh, that will help with that. Uh, also talking about container and water, I also carry uh, portable aqua. Uh, it's a two tablet system. It takes two of these to do a quart. So to do those, uh, you don't, wouldn't want that full because that's 40 ounces. It takes two of these, to, uh, two tablets. One purifies and one cleans up the taste because the taste's terrible. And also I'm mentioning a, a filter. I got a whole video on water filters, so I, I, we won't go into any detail, but this is a life straw. So I, you would just literally uh, put this into the water source and drink it, and you're drinking straight through the filter. It can't be simpler, can't be smaller, lighter. Cordage is obvious. I like orange. Uh, this is just Para 550 Paracord. Uh, Dave Canterbury has a specific things he wants to you to use. So go watch Dave Canterbury. You must have some cordage you carry. I do, and uh, <laughs> everything's smaller in my pack. Right. So it's just really, really thin uh, uh, cord. What I did find is that sometimes it's too thin that it actually cuts trees uh, a little bit, like cuts through the uh, bark of it. So uh, not it, it's good for wrapping things up, uh, but that cordage is much, much better just because it's more hefty. Uh, this again, just for my little day pack, it works fine. I also have like a similar to the 55, uh, 550 paracord that I just carry around. I usually keep this just in my car as well. Just as so folks, this video got really long on me. You know me, I, I talk and talk and talk and talk. Uh, but this is really important stuff. So uh, we're gonna break this video up. We're gonna stop here and we're gonna add a second video to come in and that will come out right after this one so you don't have to wait long. So uh, we're going to stop here. And let me ask you, did you, is there something here that made, uh, made you think, I could do that. I'd like to have those couple of items. Or are, are you already carrying a little bit of an emergency go bag or, or bug out bag with you? Uh, so what are you carrying in your bug out bag? If you'd leave a, a comment below, we'd really like to hear it. And it would help each other. What have I forgotten? I always forget something. I try to include everything in the kitchen <laughs> sink, but I always forget something. And remember, it'll probably be in the second half too as well. So uh, so leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. So be sure and come back for the next video when we'll cover the last half of the 10 C's of preparation. So uh, if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.